Hey everyone, it's Nightlight9, and this video is going to be all about Vincent. Now, we have gotten so many updates just in the last 24 hours, essentially, or I guess it's a little bit more than that now, but so many updates with so many things that I am extremely excited about. Just going through this, there's so much to catch up on, and I'm going to try to maybe do another video at a later point to go through some of that stuff, but we've got a lot of quality of life, we've got a lot of new things added to the game, it finally allowed us to have more than 30 friends, and it is now 99. I am very excited about that, I've been wanting that for a long time. But I don't want to get too wrapped up in all of that, because I could go on probably for about an hour with all of the different updates that have happened, and it's going to take a bit of time to go through Vincent's weapons. So I'm going to kind of make this, I guess it's going to be a banner review, only instead of just going over, you know, the new weapon, I'm going to hit every single weapon that uh, you can put on his wish list that came out. And then at the end, I'll kind of give you my opinion on what I plan to do uh, in regard to pulling. So, for starters, White Dog is the name of his costume. And I will say, both with Vincent's just regular costume, the free costume you can get with a voucher, which I guess isn't quite free, but you know what I mean. Uh, and this, I think that they have really done a great job, uh, aesthetically speaking. I love all of this. Like, this makes me want to play Vincent just because of the costumes. They're cool. All of his pistols look amazing. There's a lot of intricate detail in this, and ultimately, like, he just looks really badass. I'm very happy with the way they've handled that. Okay. We'll go ahead and look at, I think I might have said this is called White Dog earlier. That's actually the name of the gun. The outfit is called Stray Dog, and it gives us a new R ability. I'm sure many of you are aware of this. It's called Reprieve, and you notice it does give 15 points, as if I'm guessing later on we may get uh, something that does the lower levels. However, at level 3, which is the 15-point threshold, it applies Reprieve to self when battle begins, so it's like a buff that you get essentially when the battle starts. It lasts 999 seconds, which I think is just intended to be it lasts until it's used. And when it's triggered, which I believe is upon death, it restores, or would be a death, restores 25% of max HP and grants Invincible for 10 seconds. Um, I think that that is really strong, and I can imagine that there's going to be a lot of different strategies that come about because of this ability. And just off the very, very top of my head, I'm thinking stuff like when you're facing Bahamut, right? And he does the dive bomb. The way that Vincent, I believe, is most likely to be built if he's gonna be kind of a core hero at the moment will be kind of a major DPSer. But HP thresholds and all that stuff are gonna come into play and for some of those, you need his HP to be low, etc. But this kind of will allow you, I think, to, you know, survive those single target attacks, right? So if you got dive bombed and it was Vincent, as long as you hadn't used Reprieve yet, you don't even have to worry about healing him. Let him take the shot, get in as much DPS as possible. I think it will also potentially allow him to do some things like trigger some of these weapons easier and keep them triggered. Uh, it will allow you to build more offensively and have to think a little bit less about defense. But I don't think you can cut it out completely because this does only trigger one time. So keep that in mind. Then he's got Earthblade Arcanum. And I'm going to go ahead and show an infographic that Tom Rom made. And because there are two other Earth Arcanums in the game. And the only one I ever remember is Lucia's. But you can see here that actually... Um, Yuffie also does have an Earthblade Arcanum, which I usually forget about just because I don't use Yuffie very much. And since she's newer than Lucia, and I remember that Christmas banner really well, that's why I always forget about it. So this is the third Arc Earth Arcanum that we've had in the game, but I think it would be pretty easy to be like the boat that I'm in where you don't have either one of these. And that makes this really tempting. Um, ultimately, it is a great costume. I, I think that this is you know, obviously solid, any Arcanum solid, and I think the Reprieve ability is maybe the strongest ability that we've seen in conjunction with an Arcanum. So for that reason, I definitely think that if you're missing Earth Arcanum, this is something to highly consider picking up. 
On the other hand, Earth is, I would say, probably the least used weakness among the bosses or the content generally that we've seen. And along with that, I don't know, maybe I'm just biased because I don't have any strong Earth users, but it has been thus far the easiest element for me to substitute something like non-elemental physical damage for. So keep that in mind as well. White Dog here is the featured weapon on this banner, and it's strong. <laughs> um, you know, if you didn't have any Earth and that was important to you, they've really packed a lot into this. Now, the con is that it's a limit break weapon. And as you've seen with this, I guess what is technically a limit break banner, not in the same sense it felt like as the other limit break banners. I mean, they don't have like the little glowy, you know, sign and all that, but it is called a limit break banner. And I think if anything else, they're just letting you know uh, this weapon is limited and you may be able to get it at some point in the future, but it could be never, right? Or it could be a really long time by the time this weapon doesn't matter anymore. So that's the con, right? You really kind of have to be satisfied with about what you get here. Um, it's going to take, a, I think, some time to get some specific weapon parts worked up for him. So you got to kind of make that decision. The good news, however, is if we take a look at this infographic that Tom Rom made, where we see OB1, we can see, obviously, just as we normally would, we get a 100% increase in damage from 5 star to OB1. And when you're adding that 1.2 times damage, as long as the enemy is debuffed, which is becoming easier and easier to do with all these weapons that we're getting that do multiple things, um, that becomes almost as good as, like, an OB-10 weapon from the beginning of the game as far as elemental damage goes. So just to kind of do the math real quickly, 620% times 1.2 is 744% earth damage. And again, the reason that's such a big deal and you really can't compare it to non-elemental damage because non-elemental non -elemental damage does not get any additional modifier against a boss. Elemental damage does. It's a hundred percent modifier. So it's really a big deal when you start getting these weapons, especially when they start getting close to that thousand percent mark. And that's just massive damage when the enemy is weak to that element. So considering things like Mirasame or Maritime Sword, they were hitting like 750% at OB10 for their respective elements. Having this gun go up to what is essentially you know, if you're playing correctly, 744% earth damage at OB1, I mean, that that is really good. And I don't think it should be too terribly difficult to get an OB1 weapon from this banner. We get one guaranteed on stamp six, and then page two has three additional um, guaranteed weapons. So... You know, if you have the crystals and you feel like spending them, you could get this pretty high just on the guarantees alone. And when we look at the weapon at uh, OB6, obviously you've got 780% times 1.2, that's 936%, which would make this weapon smash. And for those of you who really go all out, 940% times 1.2 is 1128%. Uh, that, that would annihilate bosses that are weak to earth uh, as far as the r abilities this is another great r ability boost magic attack for all allies this to me is i mean the c ability is is probably one notch away from that on its own being good enough to be called a limit break weapon but then you stick the r ability boost magic attack which matches the previous limit break weapons that we've seen and i can understand why they did it uh, you know, it's it's not the greatest for everybody as far as the fact that they can't go wishlist this later, but this is a solid, solid weapon. Uh, Earth potency at 39 points is, I think, pretty standard, uh, but with this first RD, our ability being so good, I think everything here is in line. This is also the only weapon that he's coming out with in his initial kit that has a sigil, sigil boost on it, uh, so that's kind of a big deal as well. So, those are all the things to consider uh, on whether or not you want to pull for this, or how hard you want to pull for this. But, 
I think uh, it only makes sense to also review all of the other weapons to see whether or not you're going to pull now, what you might wishlist on that, etc. So, if we come into the wishlist and we take a look at Vincent's weapons, here are every single weapon that you can get, including the featured one since it's on the banner. I'm going to review each one of these one by one just to give, I guess, my slightly more than first impression on them, okay? So, and I'm gonna look at every weapon at OB10 just because I wanna see what the top end potential is for each of these weapons to give me a feel for whether or not Vincent's somebody that I think is just a must to go for right now, or if I'm gonna kinda put him on the back burner for a while. So, Quicksilver is the first weapon at OB10. This C ability does 750% non-elemental damage to a single enemy. Uh, but the lower your HP, the higher the ability potency with a max of 1.5. So if you have that, you know, your HP higher, I don't know exactly what the threshold is on these. Uh, that's something that is going to have to be kind of tested and proven over time. I think a lot of these weapons, it would make sense if it went in thirds, right? Because a lot of them have a multiplier of up to times three. So that would kind of make sense if it's like full you know, between 34% and 65% and then, you know, 33% or less. Um, but 750% times 1.5 is 1125%. So this is up there, you know, I mean, obviously at OB10, I don't think it's quite as high as like guide gloves is at OB10, but it's up there. I mean, this to me is competitive with that kind of stuff. Also increases limit gauge by 5%. And that is something that we have not seen yet. So what I'm imagining is that 5% is additional to whatever you normally get from, you know, using 4 ATB. And this is something I haven't had enough opportunity to test. So when I'm talking about, you know, whether or not I think Vincent's going to be viable or whatever, I haven't been able to kind of see this in action to know how much more quickly does his, do his limits fill, you know, because of these. They could add up pretty quickly over time or it could be a little bit slower than what I would imagine, I don't know. Usually when people get new abilities like this, they're pretty useful. I don't know if they're overpowered, I would say, but generally there's a lot of strategies that kind of come out that, that are kind of taking advantage of some of this stuff. And we'll get into a little bit more of that later. Other than that, these R abilities are really high, I think. Uh, boost Limit Break Potency plus 52. This may be the very first character where Boost Limit Break Potency becomes a real thing. And so I think it makes sense that they give him a massive R ability on Limit Break Potency. Um, overall, you know, I think this is a fine weapon, but I already have physical damage dealers doing this. So it wouldn't be something that I would be going for right out of the gate, unless maybe I was going to, you know, bound and determined to run Vincent as one of my core units as much as possible. Coming over here to the next one, Double Stem E. Uh, Poison Sphere, this is one of, in my opinion, the more lackluster weapons, except for our abilities, which are quite good. 520% uh, magical damage to all enemies, increase the limit gauge by 3%, and then if you're 30% or less HP, it applies poison to all enemies for 25 seconds. Uh, this would be, I would say, consider considerably better if so many bosses weren't immune to poison. The ones that aren't, it's almost like, hey, let's definitely try to use that or work that in but it feels easier to work that in on a materia than on a weapon that doesn't really hit that hard. Uh, and the all enemies part of it, I I just don't know how useful that's gonna be because usually I'm trying to poison one person, but having to sacrifice quite a bit of the percentage of damage I'm doing on my main attack to get that for four ATB instead of three, I don't know, with the 30%, I, I just don't, I don't care for it that much, I'm gonna be honest. Boost Magic Ability Potency plus 52 is quite nice and will definitely make a good sub-weapon nonetheless. Ultimately, again, not a weapon that I'm extremely impressed with, so not something that I would be going for. Shiran, Chiron, I don't know exactly how you want to pronounce that, but however it is, I think this is actually one of his best weapons. And funny, this is the one that they gave to us. I think this weapon is amazing because this enables your earth teams. So for somebody like me, especially who does not have the Arcanums and whatever, this might help me clear the content or do better in, you know, some of the scored content than I otherwise would. And, you know, it stacks to high potency even at five stars. So 
to me, if you're free to play, if you're just trying to not, you know, miss out on anything big, I think it's perfect to get one or two copies of this. If you get it to Obi-Wan, great. You don't need it at Obi-Wan, though. Just gives you a little bit of extra damage and some stats, right? I like the R abilities. I'm seeing a high magic attack theme with most of the R abilities here. The buff debuff extension, you guys already know if you've seen any of my other videos, how much I value that. I think it's really good. And uh, yeah, that's about all I have on this. Again, nothing fancy in the support materia slots, but I do think this can be good. However, one thing I will say about this, because it costs four ATB, and we've been seeing a lot of breach weapons lately that only cost three. That's a little bit of a downside, especially if you want to also use his Arcanum and his featured weapon, because, you know, it feels awkward to try to spend four ATB on him to get maybe as low as a 20% duration breach, and then also try to get earth attacks in with him. Not, not my favorite thing in the world, so I'm going to be using him, if anything, as an enabler more likely than my primary DPS. Something to keep in mind. But a, a weapon that I, I do like, but also don't know that it's necessary to wishlist multiple copies of it. Next one we have is Sawed Off GS, and this one is, I think this is a pretty good weapon. I think you want it at least OB6 before I would be using it like frequently. And the reason is if, if you haven't seen my previous video on whether or not, you know, certain buffs are worth it, I can tell you that most of the time, um, a single, a mid potency magic attack buff for ATB is ultimately going to cost you some DPS along the way as far as you could get another attack off, right, for that 4 ATB. Um, but when it goes to high potency, you are absolutely getting more damage out of it. So that makes it considerably better, in my opinion, when you hit OB6. Now, it also gives magic defense increase, which is the same potency it matches the magic attack. So even if 5 star mid and mid actually then makes you reconsider how good this is, right? It becomes way better, in my opinion. Uh, it also has that magic ability potency, although to a lower degree. But I do think that this weapon has a lot of interesting uses and could see a, quite a bit of play in some content. Um, it also does a heal, a minor heal, right? Just for, you know, shits and giggles. Uh, and it has, again, that increased limit gauge. Nothing here that's fancy on the support materia. I think this is one that I wouldn't make it one of my, like, top two priorities. It would be a contender maybe for top three or definitely top four of his weapons, in my opinion. Uh, moving on, TO3 Model N. And this is another one that I'm just not really crazy about. The R abilities on first glance are, glance are amazing. Uh, 62 physical attack is like, I can't think of a weapon off the top of my head that has that high of an R ability like that. But... <laughs> As a sub weapon, it loses a lot of value because of that, uh, because of the fact that you're going to mostly want this for the second R ability as a sub weapon, and 26 at OB10 is quite low. So, this is, I think, more beneficial as a main hand weapon in the R ability regard. As far as the C ability, 300% physical non elemental damage. The lower your HP, the higher the ability potency, uh, max times three. So it maxes out at 900% physical non-elemental damage. I don't think that that is amazing for an OB-10 non-elemental uh, non weapon. I just don't. Uh, it has a 10% crit rate, which does add to the, to the to the calculus. The 2 ATB is the thing that really, really makes this weapon kind of insane. The HP threshold thing, I don't know. I'm not sure how that's going to work out as far as how frustrating that's going to be, or maybe it turns out to be easier than I think. But off the top, it's not something that I'm excited to try to finagle all the time, especially when I'm concentrating on so many other things in higher difficulty content. Uh, also, I, as far as from a content creator perspective, I think that would be a little bit difficult to try to use him as a core person if I'm having to manage that HP and also explain to people in guides what they're supposed to be doing. So it's something that I'm going to stay away from for now. 
but two ATB for a potential 900% hit is, is insane, right? Because for four ATB, you're essentially getting two attacks in. You could hit for almost 1800% damage. Uh, and that's not even saying if he doesn't get a crit. So I do think that this weapon uh, is way better than it initially looks because of this two ATB. And this, I think, is also a candidate for top four, to be honest with you. But again, if you already have some physical non-elemental damage weapons built up like guide gloves or something like that, man, it's kind of hard to want to start over. That's just my opinion, especially if you have limited resources. Okay, last of the top row, we have the short barrel. Um, this is also insane, <laughs> okay? 400% uh, physical wind damage, not great. Higher your HP, higher the ability potency. Max times three. That's 1,200% physical wind damage. In my opinion, or in my knowledge, to my knowledge, that is the by far the highest single target or any target wind damage or even any elemental damage that I can think of in the game. Definitely for wind, this is going to slap as long as you have your HP up. It's a big deal. This wind potency, our ability at 52 points is also humongous okay like this is really good this makes this weapon also a great sub weapon uh you know if you look at what it takes if you main hand this you're three points away from an 85 percent boost to your wind ability potency that's nuts great weapon honestly again i've built sephiroth so heavy into wind so i just you know to start over with this is it would be a big commitment uh, but it is a good weapon, and I can't take that away from it. Coming down here to the bottom row, the S1976, otherwise known as the S1976C. This is another really, really good weapon. This would be in my probably top two priorities to get. But again, just like the other weapon that was in my top priority, you only need one copy of this. Get it out of Obi-Wan if, if you can, just to you know give yourself a little more stats. But at, at five star, this is what I call the Kuja Spirit Gun, right? Because it's all enemies, physical attack decrease, magical attack decrease. And to, again, to my knowledge, we've only had one other weapon in the game that does something like this, which was Barrett's Electro Cannon. But both Barrett's weapon and Sephiroth's also have the HP condition for the second debuff here. And that is that your HP has to be, I think, above 50% on each of those. This does not have that. You're also still getting, you know, a little bit more limit gauge. Um, but this is one of those weapons where if if you don't really have a lot of use for Vincent, you could probably find a use just with a copy of this weapon and a decent amount of content. Survivability wise, this is a big deal. And at OB6, it stacks to high, but it never starts at high. And so that is something to keep in mind. But a lot of times, the difference between mid and high isn't going to make or break uh, whether you survive. And a lot of times. Uh, magic attack plus 40, just fine. Boost ability potency plus 27, pretty low. But ultimately, I think the C ability is what you're really caring about with this. Uh, so I, I think this is a great weapon, and I would be trying to get a copy of it as a free-to-play, especially. Gilded Age. This is one of the most interesting weapons, in my opinion, just because... Sometimes you see wacky combos that get made. Kate Sith comes to mind with his golden megaphone. People building that crit build. I'm sure if you haven't seen it, you should try to find uh, either a screenshot or a short video clip of a whale that built Kate Sith up in the beginning with an OB10 golden megaphone and max crit stuff. I mean, they were hitting for ungodly amounts of damage, making summons look weak, okay? And that was just one of those kind of cheeky combos that could be made with the kit that they gave him. I think this may have that similar potential because of this limit gauge increase. 10%. I mean, this is double the next best weapon as far as how fast it increases. Now, it doesn't do anything else, okay? I mean, 4 ATB, you get a small heal, you get some regen, which regen's not bad. 15 seconds of it is pretty decent. Also, a shitload of HP, plus 62 points at OB10 is really, really big. Um, but this here is what interests me. I don't know. Again, I haven't really gotten to test Vincent a whole lot. Uh, and, you know, it maybe hasn't had quite enough time for some of those uh, builds to shake out. 
but with his uh, you know, second and third limit breaks, especially that have a 4,000 charge or, you know, cast speed, charge speed. I I think that this has some interesting things going on with it. And so this is kind of like my like wild card. I'm not really sure exactly what to make of this at the moment. It could end up being quite useful in certain maybe niche builds. And last, we have Kath Palug. Kapalug? Kath Palug? I, I guess that's it. Okay. Um, magic damage, all enemy, or magic ice damage, all enemies, not crazy about that, never been crazy about that, and I keep wanting it to be a thing, and it just kind of keeps letting me down, but that's okay. Again, though, the R ability on the ice potency is humongous, 52 points is huge, and, you know, for that reason, I think it makes a great sub-weapon, but definitely not something I would be trying to get very early on. So... That is every single weapon that has come out right now for Vincent. And I'm gonna give you my thoughts. So one of the things that I worry about with Vincent is I like to use AOE heals a lot. Um, single targets fine and I'll use them if that's what's you know better. But even sometimes when like a single target heal would be fine, if any other people are missing some HP, it's always very comfortable to cast that AOE heal. And especially people who main Aerith or even Matt, you know that AoE heal feels good. Vincent makes it a little bit awkward to try to do that with some of his weapons because to really empower them, uh, you need to like not heal him. And that's impossible if you're using AoE heals. So that is one concern I have. Another concern I have is that Kate Sith was our last character to come out and they have not supported him in the way that I would have liked them to, not yet. In fact, I can't think of a single banner he's really been featured on since the first banner he got when he came out. Uh, this is his newest weapon, the Flower Vase, that came out with bunny gloves. That's it. That's what we've got for him. And I've been waiting for an AoE heal weapon on him, etc. But, you know, I, I, you can tell. I put so many resources into Kate by the fact that I have, you know, three OB7 weapons of his. Uh, and an OB6. Um... But yet, I can't use him as much as I would like because I just need a couple other things to round him out. The AoE heal being the big one. Uh, so, with that, I was a little bit, you know, disillusioned, right? Uh, Yuffie has gotten a pretty good amount of support. Um, I actually had forgotten about a lot of, th of the things she's gotten, but she's gotten three Arcanum outfits. Uh, you know, in seven months, that's pretty good. And then Sephiroth. He was the first new character and obviously they've put out a ton of stuff for him so i guess the thing is i just i don't know how much support vincent's gonna get i would i think he's pretty popular and so he'll get quite a bit but it's still to an extent it's a gamble because if they don't put him out on a banner let's say in the next i don't know two months it starts to become a kind of a yikes moment as other things get stronger and stronger uh, if they don't put him on a banner for the anniversary, then, man, it really feels bad. And so, you know, one of the reasons that I'm still a little bit okay with what I put into Kate Sith is I put stuff into him to be an enabler, you know, not a main DPS, but to really just be that main utility person. So that doesn't hurt quite as bad. But Vincent, a lot of his stuff is really centered around DPS. And if for a DPS to keep up in this game they need to be featured at least semi-regularly. Uh, so that is a thing. My second thought is many of these weapons, nearly all of them, I feel like I have other ways to do it. So I, and I, again, as I said earlier, I feel like I would be starting over in order to, to you know, build him up where I do, it's not really necessary, right? It's not like he can do that and then something else that, that what I currently have can't do, right? Or can't do well enough. So the main reason, you know, when I broke it down, at first I was really excited. I was even gonna spend, I was gonna buy, you know, maybe a hundred dollars worth, 150 even, um, and, and really try to get a lot of his stuff. But then the more I looked at it, I was like, I think that's just pure excitement, which is okay, uh, but not, it's not really necessary. And I think I would just rather save that for something uh, that I think will be more useful and that I'm also excited about. Uh, but the last thing, again, I did have to really consider is I would love to have this weapon 
the fact though that I don't have many crystals, I mean I have 7,800, um, you know, I just can't really do a lot of pulls without spending, which is fine, but even then, I'm not really guaranteed to do super amazing on it, and I think I'm just going to sacrifice that earth uh, for that much longer, and maybe they'll give it to Tifa eventually, you know, the, the track that she's on, they're giving her Arcanums for everything. So, that is my full breakdown, I will not, at the moment, if something changes in the next, you know, week, or two where I find something out that just makes it feel like oh I have to get this or I would really really like to get it then that might change but I can tell you at the moment I do not plan to pull on this banner um, I'm gonna I'm gonna regretfully skip this one I would like to have some of this stuff I do want to use Vincent but again it just kind of is what it is and I will show you really quickly it's the last thing I'll go through I did get pretty lucky, in my opinion, with Vincent's free pulls. Um, I didn't know, I thought I was going to do a banner, like a pull session and record it. Otherwise, I might have recorded my my free pulls, the 60 tickets that I had. But I didn't. But this is what I got. I got six in total, 60 pulls. I got six five-star weapons. And I got nearly one copy of every single weapon with, I think, one extra copy of this. Possibly two? I can't remember how many they gave to us for free, so that's unfortunate, but I'm counting one, two, three, four, five, and I think this extra one was the sixth one. So I'm only missing three of his weapons, and I got the one that I really wanted, where I, I can plug him in and do the, uh, you know, the AoE magic attack down and physical attack down if I need to. So that's kind of where I am on that. As usual, though, I would love to know your thoughts. Pop into the Discord, share them with me, comment on the video to share them with me. I really want to know how your pulls went, what kind of builds you guys are running on him, because honestly, I'm going to have to use the community to uh, really find out some of these builds, because I'm not going to have access, you know, to the level of weaponry and gear that, you know, you'd want to have to really test something out and do it well. Uh, so that is what I have. Let me know how it went. Subscribe for future content if you're not already. If you are, I appreciate each and every one of your support. And as always, thanks for watching.